Only when the last tree has died, the last river has been poisoned, and the last fish has been caught, we will realize money cannot sustain us. When the earth is ravaged and the animals are dying, we shall come together from many colors, creeds, and classes. By our actions, the earth shall be restored. We shall be known as warriors. And at any moment, we can unite in creation, rhythm, and harmony. This can be here. This can be now. We be. Good morning and welcome to an encounter with the future. I'm going for a walk to decide what our contribution to the Brave New World Conference would be. Something amazing happened to Bettina and I, right here on this bridge. A wormhole opened up and two beings from the future splashed through. We were astounded, of course, but we could interact. It appears that they were from the future, from the year 3017. We could not persuade them to stay for the conference. I'm sure they would have amazing things to contribute to a brave new world. They wanted to go back to their respective futures. However, they did promise to send a transmission of what their futures actually look like. And here is what they had to say. Greetings to the world, I am Max Technicus. I am sending this transmission to the brave new world of 2017 to share what it is like in the future, 3017. I remember reading in my history books how people in your era were rather concerned about overpopulation with challenges around food water and dwindling natural resources. There was a strong sense that technology would deliver you from these constraints. And indeed, thanks to technology, you were able to expand to other planets to address the mismatch of resources available, even though you never quite found a planet where the conditions were comparable to those of Earth. You, my forefathers, were so comfortable with technology. The main reason is that you had realized that the foundation of all life is the creation and passing on of currents, the flow of energy. That's what makes our body work and enables our brain to function. Given the flow of energy is the foundation for all life, the transition from ape to human to humunculus technicus was a natural transition. It's led to the creation of artificial intelligence, superseding any capability of humans at the time, resulting in AI beings taking the top spots in evolution. The super intelligence based on genetics, nanotechnology and robotics became known as singularity. Back in the 21st century, people complained about a lack of time, the struggle to stay fit and the problem of pollution, of air, water and land alike. Technology too helped you deal with it. This device creates a hologram that changes the environment around you. Not enough time to look after the children and the elderly Cuddly robots were developed to take care of that. Finding someone to look after your pets could be challenging during the holidays. Here too, robots were the solution. You really felt, and I have to agree with you, 
that technology, artificial intelligence and robots were just the answer that was needed. How fascinating! My name is Angelina Botanica and my future is very different. I also remember reading about the discussions that took place in 2017, although the path chosen seems to be rather different. I feel that a particular shift in thinking was critical for them. They went from believing that humanity is the pinnacle of evolution and in control of nature, to the realization we are but one part of the system planet Earth and beyond. They did not give up on technology, they just decided to look to nature for solutions that were sustainable in the long term and work with nature rather than trying to control it. Biomimicry was the path they chose, realizing that any design to be found in nature had been perfected over 3.8 billion years. They thought, surely there must be something we can learn from that. Velcro is one of the earliest examples of design inspired by nature, long before humans made a conscious effort to learn from nature. Another example of biomimicry is this building in the very hot country of Zimbabwe. Here, cooling costs over the lifespan of a building far exceed building costs. So engineers decided to look to nature find a structure where the temperature would remain the same despite strong fluctuations on the outside. They found this in termite mounts. Using the design principle for their own structure, they were able to maintain fairly cool temperatures on the inside despite scorching heat on the outside. This led to a 90% reduction in energy consumption. Even the military was able to learn from nature as in this example of a hawk-shaped stealth bomber. The belief that bigger is better, more efficient and more productive had gone unchallenged for far too long. In a one-off scenario, this seems to hold true, but over time, it does not work. Everyone seemed to assume that ginormous, monocultural fields were the best way to ensure the ability to feed an ever-growing population. However, a report by the UN in 2014 revealed that 80% of all food was produced by generally smaller family farms. This led to a shift away from those fields with no biodiversity and soil that was rapidly losing its ability to produce crop towards something called permaculture. Realising the benefits of vegetation for filtering the air, providing shade and being a foundation for rich biodiversity, vertical gardens also quickly spread. This provided a healthier climate, particularly in cities that suffered from smog and pollution where an increasing amount of the population were living. In short, they chose an approach based on working with and through nature, and this helped them, all of them, to live well within the boundaries of our beautiful planet Earth. Amazing how different these two futures could be. Absolutely. And what it does, it reminds me of two paradigms I've recently come across. One by economist Branko Milanovic, and one by a proponent of the circular economy, Kate Raworth. Mm -hmm. Kate Raworth has developed something called the donut economy, which is all about everyone on this planet living well within the planetary boundaries. For me, the most interesting thing about those two views is that Branko thinks that humans are greedy and selfish. Kate offers a more balanced view, saying that, yes, we are competitive and we are collaborative. We are greedy, and we like to contribute. So there are two different paradigms which are really interesting. So we thought it would be wonderful in our workshop to explore these two paradigms and to think about what might be possible but what might not. Mm -hmm. To understand what is important to each one of us and then to create those steps towards integrating the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Just imagine how amazing it would have been to have those two people from the future with us. We have got the interviews, we've got the transmissions, 
which is fantastic. And they have also transmitted a set of cards that we can use during our workshop.